Hey guys, I got another really cool lock uh, from Mr. Eserm. He was kind enough to send me a Marks lock. That's the current name. They used to be called Scorpions, or I think the other terminology was CX-5. Anyway, they come with a security key card, and that's because the keys are really unique. We have a six-pin lock, and then along the bottom, you can see we have a groove or a laser cut line to accommodate some sliders. There are five sliders in the bottom of this lock. So when we slide the key in there, along the left side, these sliders will then be picked up by this little funnel on the end, and then they're aligned to the correct height, if I can get the key in there, and then of course there we, we pick the six uh, pins on top with the normal pin tumbler, the sliders align, and then a sidebar located on the left here it can then be pushed in and of course the key turned. So what are the tricks to this? I've been playing with this little lock for quite a while and I have picked it several times and I'm going to show you how I did that. Okay the first thing that I found effective with these uh, you're going to see me rake it and the reason I'm going to try to rake it is uh, it's a time saver. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't and my hope is that by raking it any high security lock we can set one or two pins maybe save us a little bit of time. The reason that we're not going to be successful in raking it open is because there are security pins. And this is one of them. They are all identical. So all six pins inside of the marks lock have this weird little serration. And this serration is designed to catch inside of some counter milling that's in, top of, in the top of the plug. So we get this thing uh, uh, picked open. I'll show you. I'll try to remember to show you what those look like. But they catch in there. But quite honestly, you can usually feel them and you can pick them into play. So while it's a good idea, it doesn't always work. It doesn't totally beat us. Okay, uh, I, these are easily disassembled and that's how I got that pin out. You, they're designed just like the Medicos. We take a standard Allen wrench and we just pop out these little plugs. Oop, get, to, get to the line here. And of course everything comes right out of the top. Now why is that cool? Well, I don't know. Have you ever heard the uh, saying uh, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time. And that's the same way you learn these Mark's locks. One, one piece at a time. First, it might be a good idea to learn, get a feel for what it, it feels like to pick these security pins. So you could disassemble this lock. You could take out the sidebar and all the five finger pins. And then you'll only be working on these six pins to get a feel for what those are like. And that's exactly what I did. I started with three pins, went to four, five, and six, got a really good idea of what it felt like to pick these particular spools with the counter milling. And once you get the hang of it, it really isn't that big of a deal. Then I removed all the pins, and then I put the finger pins back in with the sidebar and played around trying to learn how to pick it. And I went through a variety of different tools. And the one that I finally settled for is this one. It's one of the quick picks. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen some of my video showing you how to make these, but all I did is I took a piece of 10 thousandths thick uh, uh, feeler gauge and I got it on the grinder and I just ground a little tip on the end of it, just like you see there, and the width of that is determined by the bottom of the keyway, so it needs to fit in there and slide in so you can then use this to manipulate those little finger pins on the bottom. And I'll show you how to do that when we actually get around to the picking part. So that's really all there is to it. You pick the six pins on top, you should get a little bit of a fault set, and sometimes it's a little bit uh, deceptive, but you'll know very quickly and I'll explain how you know if, it's been, if the six pins are picked or not. And then you can go to work on these five finger pins. And there's a way to pick them. It's not as difficult as what you might think, but it is time consuming. So let me get this thing, get all this crap out of the way, and uh, we'll get it clamped up and we'll get to picking this marks, or at least try to. All right, I got this clamped up pretty solidly in there. Uh, again, I'll give you a quick look at this key. It does work, and we're going to gut it. If we get it picked, we'll go ahead and gut it and show you the innards. Um, let's see if we can't just go ahead and pick it first, though, shall we? I'm just going to try to use a rake. Usually on high security locks, I like to rake them just a little bit. That way, you might just get lucky. Maybe set one or two of them, and I haven't been too lucky on this lock, but who knows? We might set something. All right, let's see if we can't. I'm going to take a standard hook. 
and let me adjust this camera just a little bit there. There we go. And just go in there. See if we can't touch it up. Now this lock uh, has really tight uh, tolerances. So when you, when you do get a fault set, it won't be very much. And because of the pins that I showed you guys earlier, it might not actually, you might get a, what appears to be a fault set and you think you got it. But in fact, it's just hung up on one of those spools. But we're going to pop it all apart here if we can get it picked. I've got a little bit of a fault set. And here's how you tell. I'm never really sure. So what I do is when I think I have, when I think I've picked the six pins on the top, there's a way to confirm it. The lock will tell you. And I learned this from trial and error. All we got to do is just put a lot of tension on your tension wrench and then go on the bottom and test these little floating pins. Normally gravity pulls them all down to the bottom, but if you think you have, uh, if you do have it picked, in fact, the six pins on top, and then you go on the bottom and you start to get some resistance from some of them, and it actually gets you a deeper fault set, then you know you have the six pins picked. If you have no resistance, like I have right here, then you probably are not quite ready. I got, well, wait a minute, I got one back there. It's giving me a little bit of resistance. Let's see what happens. It might just be caught on the warding. Give it one more try, then I'm going to say we're not, we don't have the six picked yet. That would have been pretty quick to be, oh, I did have a slightly, just a little jump on the core. I just set slider two, it felt like. So maybe we do have it picked. And I'm just jiggling each of those, trying to figure out if I get a little resistance on one of them, you just move them up just a little bit and then move to the next one. If you overset them, then you're going to have to go back and start all over. And this is the hard part of this lock. This part has taken me up to an hour of jiggling, and then I get them all overset, and I go back and shove them all back down and start again. Okay, I got a little deeper fault set on that one, so I think I got one and two both set. If you get too aggressive on these things, that's the fastest way to starting again. I'm going to do a reset. You have to keep some pretty good tension on that tension wrench as well because there's a sidebar over here on the left and if you don't keep pressure on the sidebar then you'll get absolutely no feedback. This is the medium wrench or the standard Peterson and you'll notice it's actually bent from all the pressure that my finger is putting on it. So I'm probably wasting my breath, but uh, this may go on for another hour. But I'll use a fast forward function of the video.
By the way, when you're picking, you're not actually touching that little peg that sticks. There we go. Okay, we got a, we got an open. Anyway, as I was saying, you're not actually moving that little peg. Let me get this out of the way here. What you're doing is putting your pick into the bottom of the slot below the peg, and then that is actually allowing you to move the pin. Here we we do have an open. So let me get this stuff out of the way. Get this out of the way. Get our pinning board in here. Okay, what I'm going to do, because this lock is actually built to come apart on the top, you can see we have an open. So I'm just going to lock it up, and then we're just going to one by one dump everything out so you can see what the uppers look like. I've showed you what they look like already. They're pretty much all standard lowers. They have, they, every one of them has that weird, has that weird uh, serrated spool pin looking thing. The really interesting part is going to be the sidebar and the fingers. I think that's what everybody really wants to see here. I'll straighten this up in a second. But I didn't want to take it off camera so you'd know that they are all in still in place. Okay, I'm just going to set this right here. Let me straighten these up just a little bit because I dumped them out upside down almost. Okay, fellas, here's what the lower, I'm going to have to try to keep the, I'm going to put this right here so we can keep it in the camera. All right, so this is what we're looking at, uh, at least in terms of the lower. We have all standards on the lower uh, key pins, and then the driver pins are all these weird looking little serrated, which get, they, that little ledge does get kind of hung up in there, but you can get a pretty good feel uh, to pick them. They're not like fully serrated, and quite honestly, they're pretty easy to detect once you hit them with your pick. But the interesting part comes on the finger pins, and that's going to take just a little bit more work. And there is a trick to it, and I'll show you the trick, having had taken this apart just a few times to try to learn it. We don't want those finger pins flying out. So, what we're going to do, the way we retain those finger pins, they're not under spring pressure or anything, but if we pull this core out, all five of them are going to come falling out the bottom. So I'm going to put the key in, and by putting the key in, that will hold the finger pins in place and keep them from just spilling all over the workbench. Okay, we're going to turn the key, and then we're going to, well, we don't actually need to do that. Uh, we can just pull it out like this. The pins are already out. So come out of there, baby. The only thing we do have to be careful with is the sidebar. And as I pull it out, you can see the sidebar right there in place, right that piece right here. That's what puts pressure on the finger pins. And let me keep pulling. You can see the finger pins starting to emerge. We got one, two, three, four, and five. They're all in place. The core is now empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully, I hope, there we go. Sometimes it sticks to your finger. I'm going to remove the sidebar and give you a look at that. So there's what the sidebar looks like. Not modified. And now the finger pins will come out. I'm going to drop them into my hand here. When I pull the key out, they're going to drop out of their respective holes, hopefully. Get them to come out. There we go. Come on, baby. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. So now the core is empty, and all of the sidebars or the finger pins are in my hand, and you can see that none of these are modified 
They're all original. There's the little peg that you're fighting with. And when you put your pick in, you're actually putting your pick in beneath this little slider and you slide and pushing it up and down as you do your jiggling inside of the uh, keyway. So there we go. They're all just a little bit different. There's one. This one here is very different. But fellas, there you go. You got five sliders. You got a sidebar. And then you have a six pin upper core. So you beat the six pins. It's not that hard to beat those sliders. If you just use a little, a little pick made out of ten thousandths, uh, really easy to do and you can make it in probably about ten minutes. Anyway, thanks for your time. Everybody stay safe. Stay legal.